previous lectures, we said, why do we do DRBFM? That change is needed in products and the change will create risk. And we need to have or follow a certain process to identify and reduce the risk. Risk in DRBFM is the probability that the change point will cause a negative outcome and make our product worse than before. And the goal for DRBFM, we said we need to produce a robust and a durable design. Robustness here we mean the ability for the part to function as intended under unexpected environmental conditions or customer use. So we mentioned as well, the RBFM is a mindset that's applicable to all stages of the product life cycle. Doesn't matter what kind of product is that, doesn't matter what kind of facility we're using the RBFM in. So we see as a part of the, of the DRBFM concept and philosophy, new design is a good design. We say change could bring problems, but in a positive way, we say new design is a good design. Well, it's a good design after you follow a certain process. So the RBFM adopts the GDQ uh, process that we discussed before. We ensure that new design is really leading to a good design. Now moving from new design to good design, in this flow chart we can uh, tell when or how can we go from our current design to the good design and the new design that we are looking for. So we have the current design in here. Well, the design will make change and that change will produce a gap. Then eventually we will, we will land on our new design. Firstly, we follow the traditional methods and scales that will basically only fill partial gap of uh, the product uh, difference between the old and the new one. And uh, the traditional methods will solve part of the problem. You can deliver a new design, but it's not necessarily a good design. And we know traditional methods involves design standards, recurrence prevention, and uh, using the lessons learned and previous experiences from the past products that we produce. Then we follow the standard quality, uh, quality check and the quality assurance uh, processes using surveys and customer feedbacks and so on. Then we use the known performance requirements like going to the lab, doing certain tests, uh, having the samples to be handled to some customers and getting their feedbacks and so on. Then what we care about, traditional as we said, cut part of the problem while in our journey from a current design to a good design by implementing the new changes, we need to follow the DRBFM process to be able to uh, reach the perfect stage of the new design. So firstly, you follow the GDQ uh, repeated process or iterative process. So you visualize the parts, subparts, assemblies and sub-assemblies. Then you will study the impact of this change on the neighboring parts, neighboring sub-assemblies and neighboring assemblies. And eventually, if your product is implemented in a bigger system, then you want to know what are your neighbor uh, systems that are there and how does your product is affecting them in a good or a bad way. So you reach that through good discussions and good discussions and good discussions over and over again. I'm not saying meetings that waste time, but productive meetings that are going uh, toward a certain goal to be able to solve uh, or to study certain parameters of that product. Then good design would continue. It will continue the use DRBFM with the GD cube so that you close the remaining gap after applying the traditional methods that you that everybody uh, basically applies. This way you will reach a good design because your process is well defined and it studied the effect of the product on on of that part that's been changed on the neighboring parts, neighboring assembly, sub assemblies and neighboring systems, if any, then this way you will reach a good design with the least uh, possible risks along the way. So the traditional methods we see here, you're going from passive to active. That's the traditional process for design. But the DRBFM is considered a proactive uh, process applying GDQ process and the DRBFM uh, methods that we will learn as moving forward. This way you, la you move from current design into a good design. 
if we take if we take an overview for the DRBFM, so uh, DRBFM is a structured method that identifies the critical discussion points in preparation for design review. As we said, we are having good discussion and good discussion over and over again. Uh, that's considered a design review. So you are meeting with the experts, meeting with the related engineers, related employees, and uh, uh, the uh, teams that are focused on that area of change. You meet with them, you discuss the the main points that you want to go through and understand the details of it. So you focus on change points. As moving forward, we'll understand the visualization change points and, uh, and the uh, change matrix and so on. So those change points using the RBFM, you will be able to identify which parts or which, which uh, part of the assembly that I need to focus on in my discussion to be able to avoid any future problems. You do that by analysis and uh, critical thinking. Then you make active discussions and comparisons with similar or previous models so that you can detect as much potential problems as possible. What's the output of that process? You will get eventually a robust design and improved visualization and illustration uh, of your past problems or of your design. How did you move from a normal design change to a good design change? If you want to talk about the DRBFM benefits, firstly, the DRBFM help you to manage the risks that are happening from change, then uh, you will encourage or promote the robust design mindset by leveraging experience. So everybody in your uh, organization will be um, encouraged to apply or to suggest new uh, design thinking or new design uh, illustrations or design ideas to be able to be implemented because now we know how to manage the risk if the change really is needed or it makes uh, our organization or our product uh, performing better. Robust in DRBFM means insensitive to variations. When you do changes, when you do variations in the environment that the product is functioning in, it will not be sensitive to those variations. It will be able to handle it and pass it because we already think previously about those variations and uh, we design the products toward passing that kind of uh, circumstances. Proactive prevention. Basically, we're predicting the potential future problems and resolving them before they occur. Anybody who's involved in DRBFM, anybody who learned the DRBFM mindset and thinking process, you are building the skills to predict the future of that product, how it's going to perform even before that product is already in the market or in the new environment. This way, you are be, you'll be able to identify any future problems and you will be able to design a durable and robust design and product that will be functioning as intended and serving the customers and getting their satisfactions.